and, but also sometimes uh, um, a different um, perspective about legal costs because the criminal procedure and the civil procedure there have different costs and even different criteria of condemnation about legal costs. So that's, that might be uh, uh, also uh, a motivation. One last question now. Yeah, of course. Is there <laughs> one decision or there two decisions? Or uh, if, if it's a jury rendering decision, is, is the jury rendering one decision that affects both of the at the same time? If you are, if you are doing the both um, claims at the same procedure, you will have one single decision. Uh, but it's normally the jury, if we have the jury system, the jury says guilty or not, or not guilty and motivates why guilty or not guilty. And it's the judge that decides uh, for civil liability, the quantum and the concepts and, and whatever. If we don't have jury, uh, it's also a unique decision of, of the judge, but it's very important that either the prosecutor or the private uh, or popular accusation ask for that. Because if they don't ask for that, the judge cannot consider that into uh, their decision, even though this can be um, considered at the same time. So. The, and that's uh, a consequence of the accusatorial uh, principles that have been introduced in our, in our system. If uh, the accusation doesn't ask for that, the judge cannot uh, consider that. Uh, so that's very, very important uh, in, in, that, in that perspective. Yes, of course. Yes, hi. Um, my name is Michael. I'm a 1L. I, I, I have a question about the... Um, the, the, the difference again, I, I don't understand the difference between the the private and the popular. Mm -hmm. it, it seems, I mean, you said they're representing the victim, but I'm, I'm confused in, in what the difference is. It's very normal uh, because sometimes it's different, it's difficult to, to distinguish. I, I'm going to give an example that I'm going to somehow repeat uh, tomorrow about the, the legal case in. In, in, in the Rwanda case, in the Rwanda Congo case. But that gives a, a good example of, and that uh, moment, a same lawyer, a same professional doing both roles at the same time and doing different uh, things. For instance, in the Rwanda Congo case, I represent the Spanish victims or their relatives. In that case, this is nine, um, nine families. Somet sometimes, how you do that, to be very concrete, how you do that. Uh, one um, priest was killed in year 94 in, in Rwanda, for instance, and so that, that is one victim, but this victim had five brothers and sisters. So what I organized with that family that wanted to be present in the procedure is that they give power of attorney at the same time, the fifth of them, to me directly. So I'm representing them uh, directly as victims of someone who disappeared. So they are directly affected by the crime. Huh? Uh, in our jurisprudence, we consider for instance, that when there is a disappearance and the body has not yet found, uh, it's not only, could be not only a part of a crime of genocide or a war crime, but it's still a torture because it's a psychological torture for the relative not to find uh, his brother or sister uh, and, and it's a permanent situation until this body is found. Okay, so in that case, I'm representing the, the five brothers and sisters of that priest that has been killed, and that's a private uh, accusation. Uh, I'm representing the families, but <coughs> I'm this at the same point, and that's pretty original in that in that uh, um, in that proceeding. 
I'm representing three types of different organizations and institutions that were somehow interested also in that procedure that are not directly affected. But I'm going to give you an example, or various examples. First of all, and oh, <laughs> I, I put it, sorry, in, 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 in Catalan. <laughs> NGOs. Huh? Rwandan or Congolese NGOs or even Spanish NGOs that were involved somehow in, in Rwanda or in Central Africa that might be interested in the proceeding and the result of the proceeding that want to be present on that. So I did exactly the same. The president of that NGO gave power of attorney to me to represent them before the court. Also some personalities. Uh, and I'm giving you various examples. There was uh, uh, a former um, US congresswoman who wanted to be present on that uh, procedure. Maybe you know her. Uh, it's uh, uh, Cynthia McKinney, uh, who was a um, congresswoman for, for Georgia, and who was sent by then President Clinton to the Great Lakes uh, region of course, as an envoy, and she knew many things, and from that she's being involved, uh, not only in Congress, but uh, when she was out of Congress of, of, of that. So, in a way, she was interested to be uh, there, which is combined for her to be a witness. It can be at the same time uh, a popular accusation and be considered a victim. Uh, oh, sorry, a witness. And we have also, to give you another example, the Peace Nobel Prize of Argentina, Adolfo Pérez Esquivel, who, who has survived um, death uh, flights in the Argentina dictatorship uh, regime. So he was also active on that and he was mm, interested to be in that. And they said they did exactly the same, they give, gave power of attorney to me to represent them before court. And third, which is even more original, because these we had, for instance, in other procedures as Argentina or Chile or whatever, you know, about the, the Pinochet case or... But what is a little bit more uh, original is that uh, I arrived to represent also public institutions. For instance, um, the city towns of this priest or the NGO um, uh, social workers that were killed in various moments in, in Rwanda or, or in Congo, uh, they were really interested and really involved. What ha when, when, ha when it happened, uh, they were doing like uh, public demonstrations and the mayor of the city town was there and they were uh, receiving the body and whatever. So they were interested uh, and um, to continue with the legacy of that person in the community and all that. So in a way, they were also interested to be present in the procedure. So I, I represent some city towns of, of Spain in the same procedure. Uh, as you see, there are different categories that enter into this popular uh, accusation that are not directly affected by the crime, but in somehow they're interested or they're indirectly affected, especially if we are considering that we are talking about these huge crimes, uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity. By its definition, it's effect, it affects the whole humanity. So in a way, or genocide, of course, uh, in, in a way that this allows the law allows through that means that they are present in the procedure, they're active in the procedure, and in that case, the same person is doing the both roles at the same time. But, so you said this is for like huge, huge crimes. What, if, what about smaller crimes? Mm -hmm. in, in that sense, do the, the, you say that the popular people like the NGOs and that they have an interest in the in the case is that because they have some relationship to the victim perhaps or does that interest 
does that interest have to be related to the victim, or can the interest in the case be unrelated, and can it be only affecting the accused, for example? That could be related not only to the victim somehow, but even to the crime. I'm going to give you an example for, let's say, a small crime. Uh, imagine there's a murder or a gender murder motivated gender murder in, in, in a very concrete uh, community. Of course, the relatives will be at that level. But again, at that level, this DCC town could be interested to be present in that procedure because this is a, a, a community interest because uh, it has a, had a great impact in, in the community and, and, and they, they want to be there because they want to show the community that they, they're interested in stopping this kind of, uh, of crime. And maybe some NGOs of, of the area which are working with the gender issue might be also interested to be present on that, uh, so even though there, there is no special relation with that victim, but because of the issue, they, they might be interested in that. So th that is possible at this different level, level, so minor crimes or even huge crimes. Normally, uh, when it's minor crimes, or it's not these wide crimes, uh, it's the, if there is, there is this private accusation only. But when there's some kind of alert or some kind of general knowledge or mm, great impact in the media, in television, in, in the press or whatever, um, the city town or, or, or NGOs might be interested to be present somehow to, to show the community that uh, someone is caring and uh, that uh, they are th the community is also through their, re their representatives interested in the result and the procedure of, of, of that uh, legal procedure. So last yeah. question. Yeah, no, uh, um, we, we have time. So the, okay, the private parties, the victim's family, they would probably want damages, perhaps money or something like that, some sort of damages from the accused. But the, uh, what, what damages would the popular parties want? I mean, if, if the NGO is completely unrelated to the victim, then, I mean, what, what are they doing more than just having their voice heard? Uh, or or are, they, are they suing for damages, or, or what are they suing for? Normally, they're not suing for damages. They're suing uh, for the criminal responsibility, okay. normally. Huh? But imagine there is uh, someone killed who was working for the city town. Okay. That could be a way that somehow uh, there could be a, c a civil also responsibility or, 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 or whatever. Um, or uh, in a way, it's not only that uh, the victim belongs to the city town or whatever, but the aggressor uh, becomes to a certain community. Imagine uh, uh, this uh, killing has been made in a school or, or whatever. You might find interesting not only um, to sue the dri direct perpetrator, but also the civil liability about the school and the representatives and, and, and all the principles about caring and, and, and all that. So in a way, um, this, but normally, if this goes like that, is uh, crime and criminal liability that they are interested in. Okay, so that's a little bit um, uh, perspective uh, <coughs> about how it works a little bit, um, criminal law practice in, in Spain. Um, and uh, as I was saying, Spain especially was, uh, until last year, pioneering uh, especially these universal jurisdiction um, procedures. Just to give you some uh, more ideas and then we can share whatever you might be interested on. Um, about, for instance, our studies of law. Uh, for instance, I did five year um, college uh, at that moment, now it's four year, 
uh, which probably has, is more intense than uh, at my uh, 20 years ago. And uh, there's a, a project, when, when, I, when I started, I, I didn't need to pass an exam to become a lawyer. I just um, asked formerly uh, to my bar to be incorporated as a, as a lawyer. So at that moment, um, I know the, <laughs> the situation is <laughs> completely different here, <laughs> not so easy. But that moment, it was really criticized that uh, a young man or woman of 22 or 23 years, after five years studying law, um, could apply to become a lawyer in, in the bar and start defending uh, a criminal uh, uh, a killer, uh, a mass killer even. <laughs> you could do it. You know, there was no, uh, even without, um, let's say, experience. Now, it, there's a project that um, <coughs> um, will be closer to your system. Uh, we don't know at that point if this will be a national uh, test or something like that, or a bar test, or or even something uh, mixed. But uh, this is this is the idea. And then we have the master degrees, which is close what you are doing uh, now, which are normally two year or something like that. Um, to give you an example, Barcelona Bar has at that moment 20,000, only the city town, uh, 20, uh, about 20,000 uh, lawyers, and uh, 11 different delegations in the surroundings of the city of, the city of uh, Barcelona. Um, our bar uh, was established in 1833. And uh, we have this uh, national-wide uh, uh, organization about the bars, who unifies the bars, and these five, uh, 150,000 lawyers that are practicing law in, in Spain. Yeah? Uh, I'm very curious about that number. It seems awfully low. So I wonder if that number accounts for everyone who has actually gone through law school and, and somehow serves the law in some capacity. For example, and I'm not sure that I remember the exact title of the procurador that you spoke of earlier. Is that person, is that title included in that number? No. 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 Uh, it's so just lawyers that have been accepted in different bars of different uh, one bars of, the of Spain. I make that point is because uh, we stand often criticized accused, <laughs> disfavored as being a culture, a country that has so many lawyers. Mm -hmm. But we count uh, more than you count when we do those calculations. Mm -hmm. uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as an example, your notary, who is a legally trained yeah. uh, professional, is probably not counted in that. Number. Not counted. And the work that a notary does in your country is the work that a lawyer would do here. So to some extent, it's, you know, it's, it's a different counting system. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the, the notary, um, which is different, a little bit different what we're doing. Uh, but uh, yeah, most of the people say, um, nevertheless, that uh, we have a, a high uh, number of lawyers, uh, especially in the, in the capitals, if we are talking about. Let's think what they say about us. Yeah, it <laughs> but probably probably it's true. <laughs> probably it's true, but uh, the reality is that uh, probably they are needed uh, for the work that they are they are doing. Here, right? <laughs> That's why we are all here. <laughs> we we don't have different perspective here. <laughs> um, Normally, uh, just to give you a s uh, very short approach of what the bars do in, in, in our country, they're responsible for the ontology of, 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 uh, of the colleagues. Um, they arbitrate between colleagues also and arbitrate and mediate uh, between colleagues. Uh, and, and there's special provision, for instance, if you want to sue a lawyer, um, which is possible, not impossible. Uh, you have to ask the president of your bar first, af before suing the colleague, 
just in case the president of the bar uh, can do something or can some somehow um, arrange uh, privately between colleagues uh, the thing. The union suing a member, a colleague in the bar for some criminal, criminal as opposed to some malfeasance practicing. For yeah, exactly. So, so you don't sue each other because you not practice well. Um, even that, even that, normally, which is not really common, but even that. Uh, this means any criminal procedure against a colleague must pass first, maybe really formal, but ma maybe pass first uh, through the president of the, of the bar. And, uh, and about the public notary, which is a, another uh, figure which is um, might be a, a little bit different of what you have here. Uh, the public notary in Spain, it's uh, normally they do five-year college, and then you have to do also what we call uh, opposition, which is not opposition. Uh, opposition is it's like uh, special courses and a special exam, which is public, uh, to become. Uh, a notary that takes normally to two to six years uh, to take that and it's very important in in Spain because they have public faith and they have public faith not only for the signature we were talking about that this morning uh, not only for the signature but also for the content of what they are singing this means that if they are doing uh, an agreement uh, through the notary, uh, the notary mm, uh, gives faith of the content and the signatures of, of the people that are singing. And uh, even in private uh, issues in, in real